Okay, um, hello everyone. We are going to begin with our webinar today uh, that is focused on the orthodontic tools um, present in Nemo software, which are um, Nemo Ceph, Nemo Cast 3D, and Nemo Fav Ortho. I'm going to walk you all through the um, uh, different uh, tools and that we have uh, at our disposition to plan our cases the best way possible for our patients and for our practice. Um, let me introduce myself. My name is Raul Salas. I am an orthodontist here in Mexico, in Monterey. And uh, well, let's let's begin, shall we? So, well, basically. With Nemo, we have um, all the tools that we would dream of in one software to plan out a case the best way possible, but focus always on um, the three D world of our um, of our uh, of the dentistry, right? You know. Uh, so, what we're going to do uh, right now is I'm going to show you. Uh, step by step, how I would plan a case for my patients. Okay, this case, this case that I have right here is already planned, but I'm going to walk you through the specifics. Then what I can do with Nemo and why I love planning my cases uh, in a combination with Nemo Cast, Nemo Five, Ortho, and the virtual articulator, and also um, well using the the 2D software that would be Nemo Set. So. Um, as you can see right here, I have, uh, let me show you this one, I have a CVCT of my patient, okay? This CVCT, when introduced in Nemo, it, um, it, it shows uh, a render, you know, like a 3D render of the skull, the patient's skull, and with this we can work uh, with different softwares, for example, uh, inside Nemo, okay? But um, first of all, we're starting with this. So what's the upside of working with a tomography? You can see the bone uh, of the patient uh, and you can uh, start treating your, um, your uh, patient however you need, starting from the CVCT. When you start from the CVCT, you can add the STL models, you know, are these two and if you align them correctly to your CVCT if you're using Nemo Fab Orto you can create these two meshes which are a maxilla that has already been fused with the SDL models you have the best of both worlds you have um, your your um, a nice resolution of the intraoral scanning and in the right position with the with the skull and also you have a mandible prepared right here which is obviously um, a correct representation of the mandible with a reconstruction of um, the condyles that are that is done with the um, with the uh, Nemo Fab Orto, and these condyles, as you can see, are accurate in because they were created on the actual cuts of the tomography. So uh, we have accurate condyles, um, accurate fossas, you know, the glenoid fossa, and accurate occlusion because we have the SDLs, the intraoral scanning that we took from our patients. So. Um, with this, you can start planning a whole different case that you would do normally, okay? But um, I will show you in a little bit why why would that matter, okay? Uh, also, uh, starting from a tomography, if you have Nemo Fab Orto and you like um, planning your cases also with um, with X-rays, you can create a set of X-rays based on the tomography of your patient, which would be this one. Uh, you have a panoramic, you have a lateral x-ray, 
and you have um, uh, as anterior posterior x-ray, you know, like, like an AP. For different situations, maybe you like uh, measuring with the Ricketts analysis, the frontal set, maybe even though you have the tomography, you like a panoramic view of the arches. Uh, or um, with, if you are working with Nemo, uh, with Nemosef, you can, um, let me open this record right here. You can start uh, tracing your cephalometric landmarks depending on what you need. And with Nemo, you can create different X-rays for um, different purposes. For example, we have here the median sagittal slice selected, but we can have a normal panoramic, a normal lateral X-ray with both sides of the patient. We can have uh, just a right side or just left side, depending on what structures I want to see. Maybe I have, I don't know, maybe I have a uh, uh, an impacted canine up here in the palate uh, that's only on the right side and I don't want these structures, contralateral structures to uh, create any noise so I would um, I would choose only one side to see um, to get a better view of it if I don't uh, want to work with the tomography even though I have it. Um, you can have um, the the MIP reconstruction, which is this one that um, is closer to the heart tissue, you know, uh, and these ones are unilateral as well. So, for example, let's say that we wanted to trace this x ray, you know. So, first of all, um, you would have to calibrate the image, which is calibrated uh, in this uh, because it comes from the CBCT, it's already calibrated. If not, you could use your normal. Um, your normal um, ruler that that is normally here in the nation of the of the machine, and if you select perform tracing, which is a step two, as you can see, um, everything in Nemo is um, is prepared with a workflow. It starts with number one and so on until you arrive um, to the to the last um, uh, point on on the workflow. Uh, we have as well uh, different cephalometric analysis um, that are with Nemosef, depending on what you like to use. I personally use this for uh, for plannings, uh, for normal plannings that are not um, that are not going to be for a patient that is um, for um, orthopedic treatment or for um, Surgery, you know, yeah. Look, just for an ortho, ortho patient, these are my four go-tos, and you can select up to five analyses in, in a go. So if you wanted to add one of this, I know maybe the Arnett or um, Jarabac and stuff like that, you could add it and trace four at the same time. Um, normally, if you select um, the ones that have the most um, anatomical references, anatomical points inside the radiographic uh, analysis, you would have a complete set uh, for all of them. And I will show you like, like that. So when you start tracing, Nemo automatically calculates the most important um, landmarks. You know? And for example, right here, it uh, it's asking me for the, um, the trigomaxillary inferior, so I can change between between um, I can change between views to best select what I need. For example, if I don't want my structures to be um, sorry, this one was here. If I don't want my structures to be um, superimposed one to the other. I can select uh, different views in order to get a better um, situation right here. Okay, so that's also why I love tracing with Nemo, uh, starting from a tomography because this will get give me the advantage of uh, having a better view of the structures I'm tracing. Okay, as you can see, it's um, super quick to 
to start tracing you know your parameters and if you have to adjust the structures at the end then you you can start just by um, by uh, doing the necessary adjustments right here so for example let's say we want we want the outline of the right side right here uh, if I want to have a very view at the cella I would start right here or maybe even go to the median sagittal slice to have a better view of, of the of the cella and the Bayesian right here so this is this is achieved by having all the anatomical structures to our disposition uh, that's only um, uh, achieved by having a tomography and working with the tomography so for example right here the my, inci my incisors I can also select, you know, like the best position for them. And starting from there, we can have the best um, situation possible for a patient. Okay, moving on. I already have a traced um, radio radiograph right here. And if I wanted to, I could impose um, a lateral uh, photograph to do BTOs. For example, I will choose this lateral photo of my patient and drag the picture to best fit the profile of my patient according to what I traced. Okay. So for example, right here. It would do better if it was like this. Okay. So, um, what's the point on superimposing? I can, if I wanted to, create a video um, depending on what I what, of, on what I want. If I only want the measurements, I can use I can hide the photo depending on what I want. For example, I can do it like this. And um, here I have the analysis, and here I can uh, select depending on what I want. For example, let's say that we just want a very basic analysis. Let's select tweet, and we can uh, have our SNA, our SNB, our A and B. This is a by protrusive patient uh, based on on the tweet. Um, the both of the incisors are a little bit uh, proclined the, um, according to tweet but for example if you want um, a different uh, analysis let's say that we want um, Burson and Ligon analysis right here if we go to the um, to the incisors uh, here they are inside the norm but as you can see um, lower lip to the lower incisor to the mandibular plane is still a little bit proclined if you want to be strict about the 90 and the upper incisor is uh, at 110 uh, to the palsal plane which would be a little bit um, I, I mean it's 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 exactly on on the on the norm you know so depending on the analysis you use, you can see right here what you want. So if you wanted to, I don't know, to plan a treatment for this patient and you wanted to retrude the incisors, you already know uh, with the cephalometric trough that you uh, would have to retrude your uh, lower incisors uh, in about five degrees to be exact. And maybe you could use uh, a little bit less uh, retrusion. But the good thing about Nemofav is that you could, uh, depending on the patient, you could use a PTO, or you could, um, or you could um, uh, make grow predictions and uh, central occlusion to central relation uh, conversion uh, if you if you were to articulate your cases. 
and also well you could use um, surgery simulations uh, for surgical treatment objectives so let's focus on the BTO which is the one that we have here and let's uh, say that we want to retrieve our incisor and leave it you know like this and like this okay this as you can see right here um, also Nemosef um, makes changes uh, depending on this is the original tracing and this is the re retrusion uh, tracing as you can see we retreat a little bit the lower lips automatically because it's it's simulating the visual treatment objectives as you know uh, and it will also translate to our um, picture if we if we morph it. Okay, so you can also um, make good predictions with just make working with the 2D. Uh, but this is only Nemosev. Now we're going to the um, to the good part of the of the webinar, which is the 3D. So let me just save the changes right here, and we'll work with the next Awesome. Okay. So moving on to the 3D world. Now here comes a good part. Um, if you want to plan your cases like that, I mean, it's obviously okay. And for example, if you only have um, STLs for the, um, if you only have STLs for the, um, For the teeth, you know, like like your your models, your intraoral scannings, and you already um, saw the cephalometric values, you could start by planning a retrusion of your incisors. Uh, you know, like uh, retrude one one millimeter and re retrocline your lower incisor five um, degrees, and with that you would have a good idea of where you're going with your treatment. But uh, here's here's where the magic of using a tomography kicks in. Okay, so with um, with Nemocast with Nemo Fab or Toad, you have um, these two structures that will be very good if you use a virtual articulator to know if you're having um, contacts on your condyles. That's why I like to use them. If you have, if you use a virtual articulator, you can work with the whole model right here. And if you um, if you need to to evaluate the excursive movements, we can have. Um, active distances right here and this will tell me where are my contacts are being uh, are happening right here so for example if I um, do the excursive movement of of um, protrusion you know I can see where exactly my teeth are contacting when doing um, sorry let me get this one this is this is the one so I, I can see where my teeth are contacting if any contact is present at the moment right here the anterior guide for this patient is not um, um, being being used as you can see right here but in my condyles I can also see 
where um, things are contacting or not uh, making contact depending on what they need. Also, if I was to work, with um with my lateral movements and my um and my my opening distances um i can see if uh, my patient was to have uh, like you know uh, contacts that would appear right here uh, depending on the value that we set as um, different colors for example if we were to set the value at point uh at point one at a max that would uh, select that would uh, light up in blue for the biggest contact and in red for the lowest contact, which is, would be close to zero and would give you an articulation guide on your teeth and on your condyles, depending on the on the type of treatment plan that you are um, using. Okay, so that's that is the advantage of, of using right here your uh, NemoFab with the virtual articulator that would happen. Also this, if you did a, a setup for your patient, would uh, let you see how the condyles are acting now with the, um, with the new contacts that you selected for your patient. So that would be um, the best way to, to do this, to use this tool right here that we have. And the other, and this is the biggest advantage that I can find for um, for a patient right here, is that if we go to the setup right here, if you're working with NemoCast and you have a, a tomography of your patient, let me hide this and my bone, my maxilla. So you can see right here uh, with Nemocas you can segment your teeth and your uh, gingival tissue in, in different meshes, you know. And as, and as you can see right here, what I wanted to do, this is a whole setup for the teeth. I will show you right, right uh, now the initial situation. This is the initial situation for the patient. As you can see, we had a little bit of crowding. And this is a setup. But how did I arrive to this setup that I have right here? Okay. If you're working with a, with a CVCT or a fan beam uh, tomography for your case, for your patient, you uh, are able to segment accurate roots for your teeth. These accurate roots are formed uh, in the actual cuts of the tomography, and you can fuse these roots of the patient to the actual tooth to create, instead of just one little square of a tooth, to a whole uh, 3D model of that tooth. And if we work with the different um, views that we have right here, let me select this one. Um, okay, as you can see right here, I have the original tooth overlapped with the tomography tooth, and this will help me out to plan a good case for my patient. So that's how I arrived uh, to this situation right here that is my setup. Let me just show, uh, hide my uh, the brackets right here that I have for the um, for the guide, and uh, I'll navigate you through the um, through the whole um, situation. So as you can see right here, what did I do with this setup? I selected the best position inside the bone without um, of my of my teeth without compromising the integrity of the of the um, cortical plates sorry 
and uh, with this I made a whole setup that is not only functional but inside the bone with the um, with the um, situation on on my patient. And if we go to a to a lateral to a sorry to a coronal view right here, I also took in, into account how much expansion could could be made for my patient without hurting the cortical plates, you know? Right here, as you can see, the molars are all, let me sh uh, move the, um, the contrast a little bit. The, the corticals are all well preserved with the meshes of the teeth. So I know for uh, beforehand, without having to measure, um, you know, specifics and all that, um, that I can plan out this case in particular. Uh, without hurting my um, my cortical plates for this patient, as you can see as well, I can uh, instead of retruding my incisors five millimeters. Now planning, uh, you know, with this type of situation, I know for a fact that if I were to retrude five, sorry, to retrude lines five degrees, not millimeters, uh, this incisor, I would be um, hurting a little bit the lingual cortical uh, on these incisors you know so this is the advantage of planning in 3d and using a software like nemo that uh, allows you to have control over every uh, diagnostic detail that you can use as well i also did for this patient um, with the frontal picture like this you can use a frontal picture for your patient and um, with what you do with the original model before segmenting is that you um, align your original model to to the picture of the patient and you create a mask that shows let me let me do the initial one right here as you can see the the model is completely aligned to the frontal picture okay so with that, I know for a fact that if I'm I start planning my treatment um, for this patient in the smile center, you know, let me center these guidelines. If I select the setup that I did, you will see that now I have a centered mid midline. Let me uh, remove the braces because we're not using those right now. As you can see, we have a centered midline uh, between the upper and the lower. And um, those incisors, aside from being placed in the center of the face, um, we have them the best placement position. We have them positioned, sorry, in the best placement available in the bone. So these are the things that I love about Nemo because now this case in which I did expansion, I controlled the torque and for my incisors and um, the best that I could do um, was be if by not um, by not hurting the bone the best that I could do was uh, to arrive at almost a class one for this patient you know like it's not the textbook class one but it's a functional class one and I can show you in the articulator with a good overbite um, a little bit of increased overjet, but that's uh, a limitation for a patient. Let's remember that not all our patients are um, textbook in class ones, and um, which would be functional and good for her, her bones. So that's the way to arrive uh, right here. And also, if you need to do some different uh, diagnostics, for example, if you wanted to, since the beginning, if you're you're starting to see that your corticals are not um, ad adequate to to your uh, to your patients, in order to maybe you have a, a deficiency in the maxillary bone, uh, a transversal the deficiency, so. You have a, a very wide uh, mandible, and 
maybe you can um, um, you're thinking about uh, measuring for example um, you're measuring for example corticals you know so with Nemo again you could um, select a 2d measure on the cortical um, on the cortical plates of the first molars and this way you can start tracing and diagnosing what do you need to do for example if we were to, to measure the, the maxillary bone uh, we get our um, our measure which would be right here and if we go and measure our mandible corticals we would see um, how much distance we are one from the other I want a 2D line right here as you can see we are um, almost at the same uh, almost at the same measure so for example in this patient if we wanted more expansion to say so we could uh, start uh, diagnosing before treating the patient if we needed I don't know maybe um, cord cotomies and a bone graft you know to to gain a little bit more bone on the buckle of the maxillary bone and to for that to do an expansion um, or if if it's the deficiency is, is too big, maybe we would think about uh, doing uh, an assisted maxillary palatal expansion, or even um, you could think about um, uh, if you have a, a patient that if you're not you're not sure if you if the patient has you know finished. Um, Growing up, uh, if you want to assess the midline uh, palatal suture right here, you could also um, evaluate. Let me just select the best view right here for, for this patient. You could also evaluate the mid palatal suture and see if this patient would uh, tolerate, you know, like uh, expansion supported on, on mini screws. And in this case, this patient would uh, would benefit from it because we, we can still see the the mid the mid palatal suture. So um, that's the magic of planning in a 3D environment with a software that that contains all in one in one suite. You know, because uh, if we were to plan this software, let's say that we're using um, one for the aligners or that we're using, uh, sorry, one for the aligners, one for the tomography, and one for the articulation of the models, we would have to be uh, hopping from one software to the other and uh, wasting a lot of time, with, uh, doing a lot of effort. And in here, you can see the details uh, as you are planning and select different treatment variables for your patient and choose the best uh, available possible situation for um, our patient. In this case, for example, what I did right here um, was that, let me close this one out. Uh, this is a case planned for aligners, see? Now let me just uh, get the setup view right here. Setup view. Okay, so as you can see right here, um, with Nemo, let me just uh, get the controls right uh, for you. If you're moving the teeth, you can move it around um, to the right, to the left. You have control in the three directions, or if you prefer to, you can work in two dimensions, moving the teeth as you see fit. Also, you can create guidelines to help you uh, select like the best tooth arch possible for your patient which is what i did right here uh, i can show you a video um, of how i did the treatment planning i will show you i will show this to you in a bit and how i did my um, 
my planning. So let me get the video prepared for you and I will show you in a bit. Okay, um, let's get back to the um, to the uh, video. This is not the same case. This is another case uh, that I prepared for a colleague of mine. And um, as you, um, this this will show the process of how to do I start with cases. You know, so. This right here, uh, as you can see, is what I take into account when working with a case. So I start um, placing, first of all, the incisors in the best position, and then I start um, opening the the bite in the, in the molars, you know, the expansion. And once I finish the expansion, and the molars, let me just get it right here. Once I finish the expansion of the molars, that is what I would uh, do to a treatment plan. If we go back to this case, as you can see right here, um, once we have, sorry, I didn't have the the, the other webinar that, uh, that we did, the videos, but um, as you can see right here in the beginning, what you have is that you can, have different um, sets of movements prepared for the, for the patient and work with your own liners so that's the other uh, the the other tool that I use the most is in office aligners planned by me and you know to my um, to my liking and uh, here I can see how much steps do I have I can control um, the length in millimeters per stage, the angles uh, that I can, that I want per tray, the wicks that the patient will have the tray. And for example, this sequence was made by me. Uh, and this sequence, uh, what I would do first of all is start uh, planning out my lateral, uh, my posterior movements, you know, some anterior movements whenever I, I'm available to do it. And here I can plan out the sequence completely of the movement of my teeth. If we see it from different perspectives, you will see, for example, how the incisors change, how the incisors uh, tip, how uh, I'm working with the expansion, where am I uh, leaving my tooth, and which movements are happening in what sequence, you know? So, um, this goes beyond, you know, your normal aligner company uh, treatment because this is something you're planning yourself. This is something um, you are putting your effort into. This is something, for example, in the lower one with the crowding of the interiors, how it starts, how the intrusion is made, how the correction is made, uh, in which situation, for example, let's normally when you have a lot of crowding, you might be afraid um, that your roots uh, might touch between themselves when you are, um, you know, moving the teeth into a certain fashion. So here you can also control and see where your roots are moving when you're moving your teeth to know exactly what you're doing. If you have, for example, um, an impacted canine on the maxillary or on the or on the mandible you could segment it as well and, and while doing your setup uh, be aware that you're not touching the roots of the canine to to your lateral root or the crown of the canine that is impacted to your lateral root or your central incisor in order to preserve the root structure of your patient so uh, this is uh, next level planning if you ask me and I'm not talking about uh, my I'm not talking about my my planning strategies, uh, but the way that you can visualize everything that's happening at the same time, you know, just all in one software, the way you can evaluate your occlusion, the way you can evaluate your um, your TMJ, um, 
the expansion, the root movements, the teeth movements, all in one, and also makes you gives you the advantage to print out your models if you wanted to. For me, uh, this is some valuable canning, you know, because this is the best. Um, this is the best thing that has happened to the ortho world in quite a while, because you have the the advantage of um, having control over every uh, little detail. For example, in this case also, if we if we take um, a close look right here, our at at my upper molars, okay. This movement right here that I have on my sevens, pay, pay close attention to it. That movement right there, with aligners, with only aligners, would be uh, quite challenging to make because I'm intruding my molars. And I am doing a lot of torque to my sevens. Uh, remember that the aligner doesn't have that much strength in uh, our molars. So right here, right at this point, um, now that I have my movements plan, I can start thinking on different situations for my patient. Maybe I would have to to do a TPA, you know. Uh, uh, a TPA for torque control before starting with the aligners. Uh, I can print out this model right here, which has, or the final model for all, for all, for all it matters. I can print out the final model and configure it uh, a TPA that goes um, from seven to seven, or maybe a double one from. Uh, six to six and seven to seven and with that i could um reach the final position the final torque of my molars before i even start the aligners and after that um i would um do another scanning and you know continue with the planning for five to five which would be more predictable with aligners but this i mean the, the possibilities are endless in uh in this situation and the other, the greatest um, advantage that we have right here is the placement. Uh, once you have a setup right here, let's say that we don't want aligners, but uh, we are happy with our setup right here. We can print out indirect bonding guides uh, directly from Nemo. Uh, and we can choose the best position for the brackets in the starting uh since the since the beginning just so we um arrive at our destination that is this position in the teeth that we want just with one straight wire instead of um having to worry too much about um let me, let me get this having to worry too much about um repositioning or um uh, having to take you know like control um lateral x-rays you know so since, since the beginning we can uh, plan a good position for our braces and i will show you how you can create an indirect bonding guide for this specific uh treatment so Let me just finish um, placing the brackets right here. So, when was the last time that you, as orthodontist, uh, have have found yourselves in and in the necessity to reposition um, a lot of braces? You know, because you had a lot of crowding since the beginning. So, um, with this, um, do you have a, a whole setup that is uh, good with your bone and with this you can start 
planning a, planning a case uh, since the beginning with uh, with uh, a guide, you know. So in this in this particular case, I already uh, placed in the setup. I placed my uh, my brackets, and what I'm going to do is that I'm I'm going to get rid of the movements that I had to get to the initial position, but these brackets continue uh, continue in the position that I left them. So I know that in this original configuration of the upper arch, those braces are placed, um, uh, those braces are placed in the best position that they can be placed to reach the final goal that I had. And I will show you how to uh, how to create an indirect bonding guide for this patient in particular. And um, we have to select the model that we're working with. Uh, select an insertion an insertion uh, guide. Uh, we have two different types of. Uh, um, bonding guides uh, in built in inside Nemo and I'm going to use the one that's a splint and with the splint what Nemo will create is a, a replica of my model right here with the braces um, already placed into into the model okay as you can see right here it took away my my fives uh, because that's that's uh, a situation with the with the STL that I've been struggling with with this patient in particular. And what we'll do right here is create an area that goes passing through the through the most uh, prominent surface of the break of the of the braces because I want um, to have enough space for my braces and also that includes a little bit of my molars and my premolars for my um, stability when I'm working with this guy okay because this is going to be placed on the patient And we want enough occlusal stability for it not to move around, not to wiggle, because we need to um, to, to uh, bond the braces in the best way possible. Okay, so you can see right here, this is my guide. This is the mesh that I, that it's created. But how does it look with the braces placed? Let's go back to the setup. And let's focus on my upper arch. Here, this is the mesh that I created. It should be down here. Indirect bonding guide. And what's happening right here, you can see that I have a pocket for each individual braces, the bracket, sorry, uh, plays directly into my bonding guide. This STL you can print out, and if you print it out just like that, it will give you enough space for um, you know to, to place your your bracket. And with this, you, ju you just um, load it into the tray, get the tray up. Uh, once you have prepared for bonding your your teeth, and with that you would be able to to um, uh, have to cement you know your braces in half the time that you would you would do when working with uh, you know like manually. And last but not least, the um, the the last um, 
situation that I, that I can have right here, this STL you can export and print out in any machine that you have, in any printer, um, a resin printer at that. And last but not least, um, I will show you how to, uh, I will get rid of the, of the brackets right here. And I will show you how to create a guide for mini screws, okay? So, uh, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to go to panels. No, nope. oh, sorry. Um, okay, this is this. Sorry, I'll just go back a little bit. Because I'm used to planning my um, my mini screws guide on Nemo scans, which is the which is the one that is on the that that works with implants. Give me just uh, one second. And right here, okay. Um, if you go uh, here to the um, to actions setup and insert screw we can select one of the different um, surgical models uh, surgical boxes sorry um, selecting the type of, of screw that, I, that we want and select um, the length that we have so let's say for example that we want to place um, screws in the infrasigmatic crest of um, on the infrasigmatic crest of my patient. So let me just go to the orthogonal view layout and um, start looking for the um, infrasigmatic crest right here. Or, um, okay, better, let's place them on the buckle shelf. So let's say, for example, that we want um, to place a screw in the buckle shelf right here okay so we have now a screw uh, that will help for the guide i will show you how to place the guide but this is the model of the screw i can uh, intrude it as much as i want i can extrude it as much as i want and i can select the, the direction in which i want it to be but let's say that we want uh, um be the um be la bilateral sorry uh, mechanics so let's start by selecting both uh, a, a good view of both sides in the same molar which is the second one and get this one right here okay so as you can see right here we would have enough space but maybe um a a better strategy would be to move it a little bit uh, a little bit more to the occlusal or maybe even select a better view since the beginning which is something that I'm going to do right here <laughs> right there we have both buccal shelves okay so we can start planning out at the middle of the center mass let's say that we want to retreat and we have one right there and we're going to do the same thing with the other uh, side what i do right here is that i would um,
I want this guide. Okay, I'm going to place it right here because I, I want this guide to appear for me when I'm working with it. Okay, um, as you can see right here, I can select um, for them to be at the same height. Okay, uh, let me just move this a little bit right there. Okay, I want them both at the same height. And right here, I can evaluate if it's working for me or not, because what I would like, it's a bilateral uh, force that is symmetrical for both of them. Okay, so I would have to move this one a little bit out. As you can see right here, I already have both screws at the same, uh, uh, at the same level. Maybe this one, I would think to have it a little bit more um, close, you know, uh, maybe move it closer to the to the molar. And if I um, if I want to evaluate the position of the of the mini screw, I can do that as well by focusing my attention on each of the screws. So, for example, if I want this one, I would select the um, complete uh, axis of the, um, of the mini screw and evaluate what am I having here. So, I have um, around 3 millimeters, almost 4 of cortical insertion and I would also have two millimeters and a half of um, um, basal bone insertion. So um, with that I can make sure that that uh, screw is not going to fail me and in the other one let's evaluate this one is going to have a little bit more, uh, less, less um, action. So um, I don't, I don't like this one. I moved my screw. Sorry. Okay. So in this one, I'm going to have more or less this the same amount of cortical. Uh, bone retention, but uh, my in the original position, my uh, my basal bone insertion was not that uh, good. So we have the choice to um, re uh, move around whatever we need in order to create uh, a good guide. And if you wanted uh, to create a mini screws guide for this, um, both of these screws or one and the other, we could um, go to screws guide right here in products. And um, choose the model that we're working on. For example, if I wanted right here to have a better model of the teeth, um, I would select the, the mandibular one, choose the direction in which the, the guide is going to be created, which in this case is the upper one, and go to next, select the screws that I want, and as you can see right here, I have both screws in the area that I need. Um, select the area of the guide. And right here, I'm going to do this area in particular, right there. And build a guide. Now, and this guide, what this guide is going to have is an occlusal um, component 
Okay, so maybe this is taking a little a little while to operate, and we're running um, a little late on time. So um, I will start uh, reviewing your your um, questions, and um, we'll work with that for when the um, document opens. Okay, so Doctor Shetty asks. Uh, in CT, the occlusion will be different. In the real, occlusion is different. How? Okay, um, that's a, a situation in that I can show you right now, and this is done with the virtual um, articulator and with the um, scanning of the of the models. So, sorry, um, this is this is not the panel that I wanted to open. I will show you right here with this model in particular. Here I have my um, my maxilla and my uh, mandible prepared. So the initial relationship is the one that comes in the CT, okay? But uh, as as you are pointing out, doctor, the the occlusion that the patient has in the in the computerized tomography is not the same one as the centric occlusion or is not the same one as the it's not the same one as the uh, max intercuspation for the patient so um, in model occlusion right here uh, you can save different relationship for your um, for your treatment so in the beginning this is the occlusion that you have to save that is the original occlusions in which the models came. So when you apply it, you have the max intercuspation instead of the, the relationship that was um, placed on the on this on the CVCT. Okay, so you save it from the beginning in order to apply it uh, after. Um, how do I go from Nemocast to Nemofath? When you have both products um, right here, you can go from this is the Nemofath Dental Ortho, which is the one that uh, I'm using right now. Because now Nemofath, the normal one um, that had that is this both both of these uh, modules and the face reshaping um, are for for orthognatic surgery. So right here, this one only uh, focuses on the building of the x-rays, the TMJ, an airway volume, airway volume, sorry, and um, the creation of the maxilla and mandible prepared. You know, so if you have the, the products, they will appear right here. So I go from Nemocast to Fav and go back and forth. But once I have created this uh, meshes, I can activate them in being in Nemocast, and I can activate the meshes that I prepared for it. Okay. Um, you have the 2021 version, but you don't have the uh, articulation, uh, the virtual articulator button. Uh, if you have only cast, the virtual articulator is not included in in the base version of Nemocast. Uh, it's a separated module, so uh, you would have to acquire that as well. Um, um, with the with the person that your salesperson, you can ask about that um, with them. Um, okay, how do you determine when the patient is ready for surgery? How do you manage the surgical time in Nemocast to Nemofav? Um, okay, depending if you, for example. If you're preparing a um, um, surgical case, you know, um, you can do two stages in Nemocast. First would be to do a setup with the correct angulations of your incisors. Um, if you want to plan out extractions for your patient, you can do it as well to, you know, to make the the, the first, um, the pre-surgical orthodontics. Um, align your teeth in the best way possible and, and for example uh, create um, 
an indirect bonding guide for that patient. Once you have arrived to your destination, you can uh, redo a scanning of the patient, you know, a new tomography and a new SDLs uh, to check if you, if the patient is ready and send it to your to your surgeon. Or if you are, um, I have met a lot of people that are surgeons and orthodontists, um, both of the specialties. So if you are your own surgeon, well, you can uh, plan it yourself since the beginning, right? But that that would be a good time to that would be how I would time my patients. So I would first do a, a surgical a pre-surgical diagnostic. Um, once I I already know how much uh, how much um, I want to to move my my maxilla and my mandible, or uh, even even better would be to work at the same time with your surgeon so you would do a setup with this uh, and you would have to have Nemofab for that the one the surgical one and in the simul in this um, the virtual surgery you would um, with the with the models that you have created you would do a, um, a model surgery for this patient and see how much you need to advance your maxillary, for example. Um, okay, what is the scope of the bracket library bonding tray fabrication? Um, if by scope you mean the the whole li the um, the different libraries, uh, in Emo you can find libraries from the 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 biggest houses, you know, so you can have uh, for resident, you can have um, uh, dentatum, you can have like the the biggest houses. But if you're looking for one in specific, uh, that would be um, easier to to contact with the um, with one of the of your uh, product managers to see if if. They have the 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 actual library that you're looking for. Uh, you can you also have from Ormco and a lot of different branding. So, I mean the the selection is uh, is pretty complete. But if you're looking for a specific brand, you would have to contact a salesperson. Um, okay, if Disjunction surgery case. How do you do? Uh, yeah, I mean you can you can uh, create the a guide, for example, for uh, palatal mini screws in the direction that you need uh, to place for the expansor. And with the disjuncture, uh, if you're not using uh, a specific disjuncture, if you're fabricating it yourself. You know, with acrylic and uh, maxillary screw, you can select the best position of your implants. Um, 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 sorry, you can select the best position for the implants with good bone. Uh, even if you need them to be bicortical, you can place them bicortically on the on the palate um, and print out mm, two different things. One would be the the guide, you know, the indirect bond, the indirect, uh, sorry, the mini screws guide with the position for your screws, and you can also print out the the model with the mini screws, you know, with the STLs of the mini screws, in order to fabricate your um, disjuncture for the for um, for for the treatment that you're going to do. Um, but also there is a selection of um, um, maxillary screws, the expansion screws inside of Nemo, in which you can work with uh, with the um, whole um, package since the beginning. You know, if you're not making it yourself. Um, can we integrate mod job Vectra uh, the three photos? Yes, um, the format of the of 3D photos are um, 
normally an OB, OBJ and you can uh, activate it with this and also if you have like the module trackers uh, I can um, everything else would be a little bit um, time consuming to explain but this is the last thing that I can show to you guys uh, before we run out of time if you need to import um, if, if you have a, a job tracker and you want to import them uh, with the module with the with the movements placed and uh, you can select here in the virtual articulator import models with a relationship and um, you can either import them from records or choose from the files in this case in downloads what I'm going to do is select right here Paula It's not opening to me. Give me just one second. Okay. So right here, um, this is the case, and I can copy the address right here and place it right here. And these are my original models, okay? So I'm going to upload the upper one. Nemo actually, to um, automatically tells me if I have like um, different um, situations on the models and it asks if you want to correct them to repair the holes and the overlaps and all that you ask yes and here you select uh, mod your relationship okay um, I can automatically align the models to my original models because they are the same one and what it did right here is that to my models that are the original ones that are the blue and the purple uh, it aligned these two new models that I that I um, wanted okay and we go with that we go to the jaw tracker um, relation right here and uh, this is more or less like the like the virtual, the normal virtual articulator, for here, here we can select the tracker data. And for example, right here, what I want, the upper model that I'm going to use for uh, um, better showing purposes, you know, to make it more uh, educational, is the the full skull okay so if i select the tracker data i have it uh again right here and here it's the mod geo data and with this one i have the movements the open and close movements for my patient i can evaluate uh in different views how the condyle acts um with the actual data that was taken for the patient and even if I need, for example, let's say, um, if I need the um, centric relationship, okay? At the highest point uh, on the condyle, because they take it, you know, like they take it back and just select the best position that you can for your um, condyles while moving it back, which would be there. If I want this specific relationship, save it for an occlusal splint and stuff like that, I could um, save this relationship specifically and save it as a centric relation. Okay, 
and after this if I was to close um, to close my model if I apply a relationship associated to the lower arch and if I go to centric relationship it will open to the one that I selected okay so that's the way to use uh, job tracking for your cases if you have the, the files And um, this uh, last one, uh, last question about the simulation of this issue. Can we have the 3 df in 2D? Can we have it in 3D with Mojo or Vectra? Is this reliable? Or are we at the beginning? Um, I mean, there are ways to um, modify your 3D volumes uh, depending on what you're doing. But um, well, I personally haven't worked with those tools uh, in orthodontics, I have seen surgeons do it, and it's fairly accurate, but remember that uh, the morphing of soft tissues is always a projection, so um, um, what you do with the morphing of, uh, of the records uh, will not always be the, the expected result in, in patients. But yes, it, it can be done as well. So, okay, anyone else has a last question? No, thank you for your time, uh, Dr. Maxim, for, for paying close attention, and thank you, everyone, for your time, and I hope to, to see everyone else in another webinar, and uh, until on until the next time, well, you have a great time, and again, thank you for everything.